Happy Nurses Week, Michigan Medicine, and welcome to The Wrap. I'm Dan Elman with the Department of Communication. Today, we will be recognizing all the incredible nurses at Michigan Medicine with the help of Chief Nurse Executive Nancy May. Before Nancy joins us, be sure to go back and get caught up on any episodes of The Wrap you may have missed. We're live streaming these episodes during social distancing, so you can find them on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or any other podcast hosting platform. New episodes debut every week and can always be found as part of the headlines we can review. Now let's bring in Nancy May. Nancy and her team of nurses at Michigan Medicine step up in countless ways across the organization, and that's never been more true than during the COVID-19 pandemic. First, Nancy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, Dan, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. It's Nurses Week this week, and what a wonderful way to give tribute to all the nursing staff that we have here at Michigan Medicine. Now, nurses at Michigan Medicine, along with all frontline workers, have been facing unprecedented challenges the last couple of months. First, can you share your thoughts on how the nursing team has stepped up in recent weeks? Oh, my goodness. It's such a story that um, one would never believe, to be honest with you, the resiliency that the nursing staff has had, as well as um, just how they've just stepped into it and owned, really, uh, their practice. Um, the pandemic planning actually started way back in uh, January of this year as we continue to watch uh, COVID-19 come across um, the continent, if you want to, so to speak, and hit uh, the state of Washington. Our first COVID-19 patient actually arrived in our health system on March 10th. And with that, we stood up our command center. Um, the command center has been a wonderful tool to be able to not only effectively communicate to our nursing staff on all the things they needed on a daily basis to stay in front of the pandemic, but also to reassure them that we were here to help support them in their practice. It required nurses really to think much differently and, and respond differently. Um, than we've ever had to before. So when you talk about unprecedented, it, it truly was unprecedented. I mean, I think people have overused that word um, on the media a lot, but I will say that here at Michigan Medicine, we had a very good plan and we enacted upon it, but it really took nurses to be flexible to the needs of the patient care. And as one watched the um, pandemonium in other healthcare systems across the country, as surges of patients came into the emergency room, um, having the command center open allowed us really to have a very thoughtful plan in how we opened units. And it required our intensive care nurses to be much more flexible than they had ever been in the past. Um, we had been used to providing one-on-one -on -one or one-to-two care as far as ratios of patients to nurses. And we took a look at a pandemic model of care, which really made the ICU nurse handle uh, a team-based model of three nurses, three ICU nurses to 10 patients, which was much different than they had been practicing. And so it took um, us to provide some additional nurses into that model, which were moderate care nurses, which is kind of like in some organizations, a step down nurse where they could handle drips and um, read rhythm strips and do things differently, but they had never really done ICU care. So educating them in a quick, just-in-time training required our nurse educators and our professional development team of nurses to put together some just-in-time learning. And so that happened. Um, and what it did was, even though it was never an ideal situation to be put in, people felt fairly comfortable moving in uh, to the, these roles. And so you talk about um, ability to turn things on a dime. It was amazing to watch our nurses just embrace the practice and step up to really what needed to be done for patient care. When I think about all the teams that it took um, are in the innovation that it took, not only putting a pandemic model together for our nursing staff, but really how our physicians and other team care members also had to change the way they practiced. And so we engaged them in many of the things that we were doing um, it, with communicating so that we could have common ground to move forward. We opened um, rather rapidly a 50 bed, what we call RICU unit, which is all negative air pressure rooms, which is optimal for patient care for COVID plus patients. And that required a huge lift on many people's parts, our facilities department, 
um, our pharmacy department. Uh, not only that, but the, the Ricky was on 12 East. And so the pediatric nurses had to vacate their well-loved land that they <laughs> own. So it becomes very tutorial when we think about um, people who practice in one area. And that is a very strong unit. The leadership there is strong. They have historically had amazing engagement um, survey results. And so they just stepped into it and owned it. And then many of those nurses ended up, even though there were pediatric nurses, some of them actually went in and volunteered to work in the RICU. We didn't have enough nurses. And so until we really launched the pandemic model, uh, we had asked for volunteers. And within a very short period of time, we had over 200 volunteers literally within a 48 hour period. And since then I've had over 300 nurses in and out of various units floating under this pandemic model. So when you talk about adaptability, the ability to be versatile, um, our nurses stood up and did things that once again, I never thought we would be able to do. Uh, but it's a testimony to the passion that they have for nursing practice and their willingness to serve. Uh, we really didn't have any major issues across the health system regarding people doing the right thing. Not only our nursing leaders, but our physicians, our respiratory therapists, our pharmacists, people just embraced it and wanted to do the right thing as far as patient-centered care. So I'm very proud of them. Um, they've, um, they took it on and went over and above anybody's imagination. I have to give a shout out to all of our ICUs. And then I'll talk a little bit about the general care floors as well, mm -hmm. because all of our ICUs had to switch up and uh, figure out how to take on patients. And so we created intensive care units in our, believe it or not, our post-anesthesia recovery units or PACU. And so it wasn't um, long before we went from about 107 ICU beds to 260. And that does not happen unless you mm -hmm. have common purpose for the work and the ability to take a look at what the needs are of our patients and get to the point where we could expand that much. And as our Detroit hospitals continued to fill, we ended up taking in patients through our emergency department, which did an amazing job really developing new pathways for direct emergency to emergency transfers, emergency rooms to actual patient room transfers. So they, they just kind of were a fly through through the emergency room and we just got them to the right place of care that they needed. So it took a lot of teamwork on many people's part. And when you think about um, the pandemic in general, uh, we heard about Detroit opening their field hospital. We also heard about one that was being potential for Troy. But long before those hit the media, we said, let's take a look at getting a field hospital open. And in order to have that happen, not only did we have to have people volunteer on our main campus, but we actually had to go out and reach out and say, hey, who can volunteer for the field hospital? And we needed 500 um, people to actually volunteer and step into that space. And even though we didn't have to open the field hospital, it was once again heartwarming to see so many people cared to be able to figure out a way to take care of surges of patients if we needed it. So that those, those stories are ones that are unique to us. Um, we had so much of the work done before the state came in to even say if we could be a field hospital. They were so impressed with the, that we already had staffing for the Detroit hospital. They couldn't even open because they didn't have staffing. And so it's true testimony to nursing and what they can do and how they turn things on a dime when they need to. Yeah, I, I think the, the words caring and teamwork and innovation sort of come up time and again, right? And those right. are some of the key values at Michigan Medicine, but they've really been shown off over the past couple months. Right. Some of the innovation things that have happened, we were running low on um, hand sanitizer. So our pharmacy, guess what they did? They made a gel for us. And so right. those types of things. And even um, to conserve uh, PPE or protective equipment, we had our scientific teams take a look at ensuring we had amazing um, use of our N95s that we developed processes to get them sterilized and um, with ultraviolet lights and cleaned and back to the units. And so when you think about how much work was done um, by that command center being open and really more importantly, how people pulled together to do the right thing. And so we really got to the point where it was a well-oiled machine in that command center. It's actually still open. 
and we're looking at how we can close it down. But we learned many, many things. And I think when you are in this pandemic state, you have communication is key. And if we can de-escalate fear, which people had fear going into this, and if you didn't have fear, I it's hard to believe why you wouldn't because. <laughs> If you watch the television, everybody was, it was just constant chaos. I think people kept waiting for that chaos to happen here. And even though we continued to add patients in to our RICU, and then we opened 12 West, which was another uh, 38-bed unit to care for COVID-positive patients, we never hit that pandemonium because it was very well thought out. And also because people were willing to serve and step up and do the right thing. I'm so proud of the nursing staff here. I, it's humbling to me to see how far we've come and how we've pulled together as a community of nursing. Um, and since I've been in this role, the short time I have, and I will be forever grateful to them for the work that they have done and they continue to do daily. Our general care areas as well, we took many of our nurses and moved that to a pandemic staffing model because our general care areas, even though our census was down, we moved many nurses into that ICU model to be able to support the ICU nurse. And so they need really their hats off to everyone. It was like, I hate to say doing the hokey pokey, but it kind of was in some ways because people, we stretch them to limits that, you know, you just one wouldn't think you could, but the flexibility and um, uh, just once again, the compassion people had to do the right thing. It just continued to um, be in focus uh, on a daily basis. So. Well, that's a great look back at, at obviously the last couple of months, but now let's look ahead a little bit. What do you foresee to be some of the challenges that nursing and maybe patient care in general will be facing at Michigan Medicine? So, you know, I think the hardest part about COVID-19 is really not knowing what the future holds. So if you took a look at um, COVID today, there's many that predict that we could be in the same situation that we were in in March and April um, in a you know, four to six months. And when we look at where the governor has done our social distancing and kind of closed down our state, as we slowly back uh, get to the point where we're back opening things, we don't really know if we're going to have a research or not. And so um, I think people so want to get back to post-COVID, you know, post-COVID back to pre-COVID times. But I don't know, honestly, if we'll ever be back to where we were before. Nor maybe we shouldn't be because there were many lessons learned along the way. Um, some of them, as you had said, was innovation, right? But mm -hmm. we've been able to provide care through video visits and um, different communication platforms where we can connect with our patients in a different way that are all good things that we learned out of this. Um, I also take a look at some of the um, things that we've learned with our ambulatory care teams with drive through uh, screening. And those are things that will probably continue to stand up until we have a better handle on um, our future state and how many people actually have COVID. So some of the things I think as you that worries me going forward, whether or not we're going to have to replace this model back in place at some point, because it's a lot to ask the people to do, um, especially not knowing if it's going to be like this on a cyclic basis, meaning it could be two or three times a year that we have to ramp up or ramp down. So the intent is to leave the uh, RICU open at least for a few more months um, as our population of patients kind of get more manageable. We will be able to uh, maybe um, integrate those patients into our regular units and floors. But I think the RICU will always be designated as a unit that if we had to open quickly, we would be able to do that on lessons learned. Yeah, that's great. Now, Michigan Medicine is a magnet organization would you say that we've lived up to the hallmarks of that prestigious designation? I would. I mean, to be honest with you, there are so many wonderful stories and examples of things that we have done through COVID that would fit many of the what we call sources of evidence and magnet. It's really about the professional practice of nursing and the excellent care that is received. And when we look at some of our outcome data related to the COVID population, it's better than most that would never be able to happen unless we had strong nursing teams that were able to act upon um, the orders as delegated by physicians. Uh, and so I do believe that we are a very strong magnet organization and people should be very proud of the work that they've done and what we've accomplished in a very short period of time. So mm -hmm. I would agree with you 100%. We are a A plus magnet organization. Yeah. Now we just need to get people to fill out the surveys as they come through so we can continue on with our magnet journey. 
Yeah. Now that sort of dovetails into to my final question for you. If you had one message that you wanted to send to the nursing community during Nurses Week 2020, what would that message be? So I have like I could think of a million things, but I'll try <laughs> to keep it short and succinct. Well, first I want to say that I'm proud of each and every one of you because without you, this never would have happened as smoothly as it did. I think you should all celebrate your accomplishments um, because this is was not an easy lift at all. And when you think about um, what had to happen and people just jumping in and doing the right thing, you should be very proud of it. I can tell you, I'm very proud of you. I used to hear the expression that uh, they did a campaign years ago called the Michigan nurse. Now I have better understanding because we have stepped up and we have done what we needed to do. And you are all Michigan nurses and should be proud of that because of the outcomes we've been able to achieve. Um, I would also say reflect back. Um, people came up, they stepped up, they found purpose to the work that they do, which really drives what we do in nursing. We get in this um, profession to serve others and uh, tie that purpose uh, to really not only the good outcomes, but caring for the public. And as Many of you know, we have been acknowledged on TV about being heroes, and you really are heroes. Um, not only you are heroes, our frontline care team members across um, the country are heroes. And um, you'll sit back and you'll reflect back on this and you'll say, how did we do it? And you did it because once again, you're a Michigan nurse and you know together collectively what we can accomplish. And it was great stuff that happened. Um, as a community of nursing, I think we are stronger than ever, and we will continue to stay strong, but it's through that united effort and feeling purpose to the work. Lastly, I would love to thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for being there, for our patients, for our families, also for your colleagues. These are not easy times. Many scary things people were watching on the news and fearful that they may bring COVID home to their families and their loved ones and how you all supported each other. I want to thank you for that. And that's really about being a community of nursing and pulling together and for that common purpose and why we got into this profession. I know we'll be stronger because of it. And once again, I can't thank you enough for all that you have done, not only during this COVID crisis, but really I could tell stories that I have received from patients and families in the few months that I've been in this role. And you do make a difference in people's lives. And um, nursing is the number one trusted profession, and I certainly know why, because our public trusts you, our patients trust you, I trust you, and I know together we're going to be stronger because of this public crisis. So happy Nurses Week. We have a lot to be celebrating. Yeah, that's perfectly said, Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us and for spending a few minutes with us. If you want to learn more about Nurses Week, including a great video that celebrates the year of the nurse and midwife, be sure to go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. If you want to learn more about Nurses Week, including a great video that celebrates the year of the nurse and midwife, be sure to go to mmheadlines.org. That's mmheadlines.org. And while you're there, you'll find plenty of other COVID-19 related content, including a story on a recent patient who was released from the hospital and an inside look at a few areas who are carrying out personalized care despite social distancing. And as always, Headlines hosts a COVID-19 updates page, complete with daily updates and valuable resources. Find all those and more at mmheadlines.org. All right, it's time for the weekly trivia contest. Last week, we asked listeners, and Nancy, I know you'll appreciate this question, how many nurses volunteered to staff the RICU when it first opened up? The answer was 275, and I know it grew from there. Congratulations to Carly Hendy, who sent in the correct answer. Carly, a member of the Department of Communication, will be in touch shortly to help you claim your prize. Now for this week's question, which is, Nurses Week ends each year on March 12th. What is significant about that date? Once again, Nurses Week ends each year on March 12th. What is significant about that date? Once you know the answer, send it to headlines at med.umich.edu for the chance to win a great prize. That's all the time we have for this week. Thanks again, Nancy, for joining us. I appreciate everything you and the entire nursing staff at Michigan Medicine have been doing in recent weeks. You're truly inspiring to us all. And thank you to all of our listeners and viewers 
for everything you are doing for patients, families, and each other. We'll see you next week.